Okay, case number five. We'll do a couple of pediatric cases. Five-year-old child with seizures and bilateral weakness. You are shown two images at the same level. On your left, a T1 non gadolinium image, and on your left, a T2 weighted image. Give you a couple of seconds to look through the images. Ready? We on to the first question. Okay, the diagnosis is A, open lip schizencephaly, B, perisylvian cortical dysplasias, C, closed lip schizencephaly, D, bilateral gray matter heterotopias, and E, transmantle dysplasias. Okay, let's see the correct answer. And the majority of you said C, closed lips disencephalus. Ah, very good, very, very good. That is the correct answer. And here's the same patient showing the gray matter extending from the surface of the brain into the lateral wall of the lateral ventricles. And you can see this typical dimple that the uh, schizencephalus do have. Okay, let's go to question number two. Which one is false regarding schizencephaly? A, the open lip type is more common. B, most are bilateral. C, they are lined by polymicrogyric cortex. D, they are due to chromosomal defects in some patients. And E, most are found in the frontal and parietal lobes. The content. So which one is false? Okay. Let's take a look at the correct answer. Mm. Most are bilateral. Slightly more than half of them are unilateral. Okay, let's look at the differential diagnosis here. In an open lip schizencephaly, the cleft is actually open, and you have CSF between the lips of the schizencephaly. Uh, notice that the cerebral hemisphere in this patient tends to be small, the adjacent lateral ventricle enlarged, and, and there is absence of the septum pellucidum in the majority of these patients. Uh, Parasylvian cortical dysplasia is usually, usually polymicrogyric cortex that travels along with the sylvian fissure, may be unilateral or bilateral. It is unilateral in this case. You see it over here. And on the parasagittal image is one of the clues that you're dealing with a parasylvian cortical dysplasia is that the sylvian fissure extends way up high superiorly. Gray matter heterotopias, we all see them uh, quite often. Uh, nodular in this type. Uh, uh, abutting the lateral wall of the ventricle, same signal intensity as the cortex. Notice that the overlying cortex is a little bit thin and dysplastic. There are lines from the radioglial fibers communicating the nodular heterotopias with the dysplastic cortex. And in this case, the entire cerebral hemisphere in this patient is a little bit smaller than the contralateral hemisphere. Transmantle dysplasia, basically a hamartoma of gray matter. The dysplasia extends from the wall of the lateral ventricle, the zone of the germinal matrix, to involve the cortex. And in this case, it is not only involving the cortex here, but there is a cortical dysplasia involving the posterior aspect of the sylvian fissure. Okay, let's talk a little bit about schizencephaly. 60% of them are unilateral, 40% of them are bilateral. 20% of them are closed lip, and 80% are of the open lip type. So I actually show you a case of schizencephaly that is not that common because I show you a bilateral closed lip. They may be associated with a, chromo a defect in chromosome 10. The areas of the brain uh, that are most uh, affected are the frontal and parietal lobes, and the symptoms associated with them are seizures. Curiously, they tend to be less common and less prominent when the schizencephaly is bilateral than when it is unilateral. Patients tend to have hemiparesis, developmental delay, and some patients may have blindness. And if you have a schizencephaly in a patient that have blindness, some people will consider that as part of the, this, of the spectrum of a septo-optic dysplasia, but I am not sure that that is true. Okay.